Hey everyone, it is Meg from the Teacher Studio here with a brand new blog post to share with you. Today I thought I would give you a quick overview of the topic I covered, um, and then I will link in the description to the full post if you want to read more. Here's how this post came about. I have been thinking a lot lately about what gives me passion about teaching. And one thing that has always kind of driven me and hit me right here is the idea of creative thinking. I personally have worked very hard to develop my own creativity as a, a child, teen, and then an adult and as a teacher. And I really feel strongly that one of our most important roles as teachers is to nurture and build creativity in our students. We absolutely must be raising the next generation of people who can solve problems, can be flexible and creative. So today's post is about explicitly finding ways to teach creativity in the classroom. Now, before we even get started on the four strategies I want to teach you today or talk to you about, is that we have to understand that in order for creativity to happen in the classroom, we have some work to do with mindset and also with classroom community. In order for students to really be creative, they need to feel safe. And in order to feel safe, we as teachers have to do our best to help students understand that being creative means taking risks. It means making mistakes. It means questioning things. And all of these are okay and good. And this takes time. So when I think about starting my school year and all the work I do to try to create my classroom community, this is setting me up to be able to work on these creativity skills throughout the year. Okay, so what I wanna do is talk to you about the work of one researcher, and this is not new research, okay? Uh, Paul Torrance, and he is the one that when I read his work, things really seem to make sense. And he talks about four main creativity skills that we can actually teach and nurture. Um, you know, you might, people might argue that you can't teach creativity and maybe you can't, but you can teach these skills that set students up to be more creative. So I wanna quickly run through them. I go into a little bit more detail in the blog post. The first one is fluency. We want students to be able to generate a lot, lot, lot of ideas, no matter what we're talking about. Um, because even though some ideas might not be good, when we can generate a lot of ideas, the chances of getting a good one increase dramatically. So fluency is the first one. The second one is flexibility. And this is a little bit different. This is um, the idea that we can create a lot of ideas, but we can create a variety of ideas. We don't just go down one path where we get all of the same kinds of answers. And sometimes you've probably done brainstorming activities with your class where you, you find that you're kind of going on and on in one direction. And maybe you as a teacher have to intervene to shift it about, you know, oh, well, what about this direction or trying a new category. Um, in fact, as I was writing this post, I started like kind of thinking, oh, I could write a post about that and a post about that and a post about that. If you think creativity is a topic you would like me to write more about, again, I feel pretty passionate about it. Um, let me know in the comments or send me a message because that is certainly something I could do. Okay, so we need fluency, lots of ideas. We need flexibility, different types of ideas. We also need originality. So if you have a class of 24 students and you are brainstorming on a topic and students are coming up with a ton of ideas, but everyone's ideas are the same, you're missing originality. What we want is students to start to see that that unique idea can take the brainstorming into a whole new direction. So when you start to notice those trends, that's where you as a teacher can kind of step in and try to nudge and prompt to try to get those more original ideas. One thing I often do, um, I have an activity I do with students to kind of warm them up. It might be something like brainstorm a list of as many ways as you can in four minutes to make a thousand, you know, so maybe it's 500 plus 500 and 499 plus 501 and 999 and a half plus one half, that kind of thing. 
But what I ask students to do after, after they have brainstormed is to star one or two that they think nobody else will have come up with. That's originality. And then we do some sharing and so on. Okay, the final strategy that Torrance talks about is elaboration. And that's the ability to take an idea and add on or enrich it. And in the elementary grade, third, fourth, fifth, students love to piggyback off each other's ideas. But sometimes what we notice is they kind of say the same thing in a different way. But when a student can take an idea and then push it even further, even deeper into a new direction, that is elaboration. So hopefully you can kind of see with these four things, different ways, different activities that you could do in your classroom to nurture that as an actual learning skill. So in the blog post, I've given a couple of different examples. Um, I talked about the book, Fish in a Tree. It's the first read aloud I do every year. So I used it as an example. And I just gave some very concrete ways that we can work on fluency, flexibility, originality, and elaboration um, when we are having our discussions. When we think about mathematics, science, social studies, a lot of these things, these standards that we have can be enriched if we look at them through the lens of creativity. How can we get students doing more than just filling in the blank? So I hope you take some time to kind of take a peek at the post, see what you think, and I would really love to know if you would be interested in more either video blog posts or written blog posts about the topic of creativity. Again, I feel really strongly about this, that in order for students to have a well-rounded education, they need to be thinkers. So thanks for stopping by and we will see you soon.